Hi, I'm Randall. I'm a first-time boat owner with 10,000 miles of open ocean sailing experience. I love classic boats, and as a new owner, I'm more curious than ever about what goes into buying, fixing, improving, operating, and safely enjoying their magic and beauty. Join me as I talk to experts and share insights on all things related to older sailboats. If you're interested in affordable ways to get out sailing, you're in the right place. Today, I'm tagging along with Jim, a veteran surveyor, to chat about DIY tips on an old sailboat and what you can look for before you hire a surveyor. Hey, Randy! Good to see you. Hey, man. Good to see you, bro. Thanks for uh, taking the time to, to meet with me. Oh, um, good, yeah. So. We get a lot of questions, right, from viewers that say, I have a dream of sailing, I have a dream of getting my family out in the water, or I want to retire, but I don't have a half million dollars. And I really like the Captain Q show because you guys are showing boats that are 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 90,000. Those are attainable budgets. Maybe I sell my house and I'm going to retire. But as they start to go through the buying process, it's unchartered territory. What I was thinking was, you are a veteran surveyor, you see a lot of different boats, is there a way that we can give people a little bit of a DIY survey as you're dipping your toe in the water of buying a boat? And so that's why I'm here to bother you and that's why I'm here <laughs> to interrupt your day uh, so that maybe we can give these folks a little bit of a guide. That's a, a great idea. Where do you, when you drive up to the boat yard, even let's say you've got a survey commission uh, client, uh, where do you start? Well, the first thing I would do is walk around the boat and look at the kind of obvious things that might come up in yep. terms of uh, wear, tear, deterioration, impact, etc., and then get a little more in detail in what's going on and how serious is it. Yeah. So, yeah, we got an entire boatyard here <laughs> to go through. I mean, there's got to be a million boats in this boatyard. So. And frankly, after thousands and thousands and thousands of boat bottoms, maybe we should start on the bottom All right. Yeah. Yeah. and take a look at a few boats and see if uh, some of these are going to be the kind of boat that one of your people might be interested in buying. Yep. And at least before they go and spend a lot of money on a surveyor, yeah. they can get a feel for, well, what can go wrong with the bottom of a boat here? And well, what am I going to be dealing with in terms of repair or negotiations? Well, so one of the things that a buyer can do before they actually go ahead and hire a surveyor is look at the kind of care specific pieces of the boat have gotten over the course of ownership. Some of those things that are important would be the prop, the prop shaft, the cutlass bearings, the zincs, the kind of maintenance items on the underwater hull. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the running gear. It's a... Uh, and what do you mean by running gear? All right, the prop and the shaft. Okay. This particular prop and shaft exits the hull through this skeg. There's no strut holding the shaft. Yep. There's probably a tube in here, which or which may not be okay. Okay. And then a shaft log hose and a stuffing box and off to the engine. Just a quick note on the shaft log. It's essentially a through hole fitting for the drive shaft to pass through the hull. They can be bronze, fiberglass, aluminum. They're designed to allow the drive shaft to pass through and also provide a mounting service for the stuffing box or shaft seal. So in this kind of an installation, you want to be able to make sure that the cutlass bearing back here is getting enough water flow to lubricate the shaft, and that's what this intake is for. How do you take a look at that to see if the cutlass bearing is in good shape? Well, one, it's easy enough to rotate a shaft. And if the shaft binds up while you rotate it or is stiff at some part and then loose on another part, yep. it may mean that the shaft is bent. The shaft is pretty bound in the cutlass bearing, indicating that it's not aligned properly or the hull is deformed from being ashore. The cutlass bearing is right here. The basic idea is that that cutlass bearing can't have too much play in it. Okay. So we typically lift the yeah. shaft up and see if there's any movement. So what we're looking for is a little play there. It looks like about a millimeter or so up and, and down. And if you can hear it, if yeah. it's banging like yeah, that, I can hear it banging. that means there's too much slack and that will cause shaft vibration. Okay, and what is the implications or the consequences of having shaft vibration? Well, that vibration travels up the shaft, 
through the stuffing box or shaft gland, and it ends at the very front end of the shaft and the back end of the transmission. Okay. Where the transmission output flange connects to the shaft uh, coupling, yep. and that causes vibration, and that vibration is transmitted right into the transmission output shafting oil seal. Ah. And that can cause that seal to wear over time, and then you lose some transmission fluid, maybe a lot of it. Yeah. You don't know. But a surveyor will figure all this out, yeah, yeah. or you may just decide, uh, you know, i, I got to do a cutlass bearing. I, I don't necessarily want to get involved in that job. Right. Don't disqualify a boat for that. Yeah. It's, it's a it's, small job. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of a... Just so you know, maybe it's a negotiating point with the... Good negotiating point. Maintenance item, basically, but yeah. sometimes it'll get negotiated. Yeah. Do you think, like, a average yard bill would be, what, a couple thousand to swap out a... Maybe a there? thousand bucks and change. Yeah, yeah so not, not, not terrible. Not too bad. Yeah, okay. No. This particular arrangement on this prop is a little different from most, but the uh, this nut... This is that. This is actually two nuts you're looking at here. Oh, okay. Yeah, lock nut. A very thin nut. Yep. Right, and a thicker nut. And the idea is that the lock nut is the last nut. Yep. And the lock nut should have the most threads. Yeah. So to cinch a prop up on a shaft, all you need is a small nut like this. Okay. It'll cinch the prop up onto the taper yep. and get it seated onto the shaft. And then you want to lock the small nut down with the lock nut at the back end. So this is actually backwards in this arrangement. Oh, interesting. So you would bring the prop yep. up snug on the taper with the small nut yep. and then lock things down with the big nut yeah, so that yeah. the load was across more threads. That's right. That makes a lot of sense. Anything you look for in prop condition? This prop is in pretty great condition. Maybe we can look at another boat, but... Yeah, yeah, this one's okay. It's got, um, I don't know whether it's got some kind of zinc on it or something, some kind of but... zinc coating, yeah. Yeah, it's in good shape. Are there any coatings that you like in particular? Have you tried any of those new funky ones? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, on a sailboat, most people will probably go for something like one of the zinc primers, like the Pettit Zinc. Yep. It's good material, okay. good product. Yeah. Um, you could go for the Velox, which is yeah, a epoxy yeah. coating or prop speed. Yeah. More expensive, tends to release barnacles pretty effectively. Yeah. Um, but for the kind of exposure that a sailboat prop gets and its RPM, yeah. that slick coating is really not that important. Right, right. Maybe right. more for power boats? More for power boats. Okay. Yeah, shafts turning at higher RPM. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at some others. So this is a counter-rotating prop. It turns counterclockwise from viewing it from the back. Okay. And this, I imagine, would propel it forward, right? And in reverse would be like that. Can you see the difference? Yep. Yeah. yeah. So I'm supposed to know all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, but sometimes. And you can adjust the these angles. Is that right? Or is this? That's set? right. Yeah. There's okay. actually an internal adjustment in here that will adjust the pitch of the prop yeah. to meet the engine RPM needs that the engine is set up for its horsepower and load configuration. Okay. So this one is not pitched very much, is yeah, it? Yeah, no, it's no, it's slow. a very slight pitch. So, so what do you look for? If the idea with the max prop is that the prop blades themselves, when you rotate each one, yep. can't have too much slack in them. Okay, so a little bit of play because there. if they do, that's wear. Yep. And then they can bind up. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of feel for a little See play. That? Yeah. Yeah, I've got like a, another yeah, same, about, like a millimeter. About right. Yeah, it's about right in a max prop. And was that would that raise any red flags for you if there's that much play? No, that's actually. About Pretty right. Good. You need some play. Okay. Yeah. Not not too much more than that. Okay. The shaft in this particular boat has what's called a weed cutter. And this particular one is referred to as spurs, I think is the okay. product name. But if you take a close look at it, when the prop is rotating, it will catch a line, like a yeah. lobster pot line, and it will actually cut it so that the prop doesn't get fouled in the lobster pot line. Yeah. You see a lot of these. Basically, they have to be working in such a way that both the cutter blade and the rotor blade are yep. intact. Sometimes they get banged up and they fall off. And this particular shaft has uh, zincs that are showing a little more wear. When they start to look like this, that's about the time you think about, are they ready for replacement? Not quite yet, but yep. getting close. And now here we have a good example of uh, a strut with a cutlass bearing, right? Yeah, this is another cutlass bearing installation. Um, 
A buyer may not be able to tell a lot about the integrity of the strut from the external inspection of it. Inside, the strut is bolted to the hull, sometimes mm -hmm. overglassed. If there's moisture getting in, you can see traces of it inside the boat, okay. which you may not notice from the outside. What would it look like if they're... Rusty. Okay. Pretty much rusty. Yep. Schmutzy. Now, now, little schmutz isn't going to hate. This is a strut that holds the prop shaft uh, and cutlass bearing that we had talked about, yeah. right? Yep. You can see that the bolts that are holding the strut in have gotten water up inside. They're rusting and they're weeping. Here while the boat sits ashore. So that means when this boat goes back in the water, that water's going back up in there too. And where they're oxygen starved, they may possibly fail. And so this is a good installation to get further investigation on. If a guy's gonna buy a boat, this would be an easy one to take a look at. First thing you would do is you would shake it to see if the strut's moving. Yeah. And in this particular case, there's no movement. Yeah. So that just means we may need to drop the strut, check the bolts, rebed the strut, tighten everything back down. And so rebedding the strut means you're going to put new bedding compounds. Is that yeah, essentially like, what it is? Yeah, forty one hundred or yeah. boat life, white caulk or yeah. What, yeah any and of do those. you use something that's got a little bit of flexibility? If it's under vibration, you want to have something that's not rigid. Yeah, absolutely. A yeah. little bit of flexibility would accept some of that vibration. It's a natural part yeah. of, 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 especially a two blade prop, right? right. right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> this particular shaft. Shaft! Damn right. Just a little, got a little bit of movement. Yep. Not as critical as the other shaft had. See that one? Oh yeah, that's like a half millimeter. Yeah, a little bit of movement. Yep. Not quite ready for replacement yet. Yeah, so we're pretty happy with that. Yeah, I would give it another season or two. How often do these cutlasses get replaced ideally? Every boat's different. Shaft RPM. Yep. Operating environment. Okay. Sandy, shallow water. Yep. Abrasion. Yep. More, you know, than, than sure. New England cold water like Maine. Okay, yeah. Right? Where it's rocky and mostly just open water. Right. So, depending on the RPM of the shaft, too, yeah. that's where. Right. So, that's why you test it. Every year or so, okay. you, you give that shaft a wiggle. How bad is my cutlass burning? Yeah. If you have shaft vibration and you haven't struck anything, yep. that's a good indication that okay. it's time to replace the cutlass bearing. Oh, okay. Any sailboat you look at, regardless of the hull configuration, is going to have an auxiliary motor in it more than likely, and it's going to have a prop, and the props will either be two blade, which has very little resistance when the boat is sailing because there's only two blades, and some of those are folding two blades, and that is less resistance. Then you'll have a three blade. Is that three? Yeah, let's go with three. three? Yeah, That's sure. three. Today yeah. it is. Three blade, like this. A little more resistance, but a little more application of torque to the water when the engine is running. Uh, and so when the boat is powering, more thrust. So this particular installation is kind of interesting. If you get a close up on it, the prop is what? Maybe four inches in back of the strut and the prop shaft is one inch. And the rule of thumb is the prop should be one and a half times shaft diameter abaft the strut, which would mean the prop should be sitting right here. And the reason for that is to prevent vibration because the prop as this far back on the shaft will have more vibration on the shaft as it passes through the cutlass bearing. And as a result of that, more wear on the cutlass bearing. This particular prop is a three-bladed bronze prop. It's in good shape otherwise. Turns okay in the strut. Cutlass bearing's okay, but look, these are the nuts that are supposed to secure the prop on. Remember we were talking about the yeah. little nut supposed to go on first? Yep. Well, it's not on this one, and there's a big nut. But neither one of them are doing anything. <laughs> it's a good thing they have a cotter pin in there. And we can keep our prop on if we back up. You'd have to take the shaft out and send it in for machining. They would t cut a taper in the shaft. They would cut the shaft, cut a taper into the shaft, and put in a new keyway if they wanted to change it. But the simpler way to do it, would be measure what you want to cut off here and then cut it off at the coupling end and machine the coupling end yep. and slide this up. Yep. But it's still got to come out of the boat. Right. So I want to give a big thanks to Jim for spending so much time and sharing so much knowledge with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. Jim shared so much knowledge with me that day that I had to break it into two parts. So part two will cover rudders, keels, through holes, and other key parts of the bottom of the boat 
If you have questions you'd like to ask Jim, feel free to drop a comment down below the video or shoot us an email. Send an email to askjim at yachthunting.com and we'll gather up all the questions and try to answer the most popular ones. If you'd rather have a direct line to Jim, head on over to our Patreon and we'll make sure that he gets the questions and answers as best as he can. And of course, thanks again to our Patreon sponsors for all of your support. Without your help, this production really wouldn't be possible. So, so really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thank you.